least we don't have to go back and forth on whether it was the right decision to go for two. Take your moral victories, team. Keep it clean. Anyway, what's going on? It's Engraving the Hill with another video. And in this video, I'm to share my post game. <laughs> <laughs> my post game thoughts from the game that we all watched between the Bengals and the Ravens and boy it started off so lovely but it ended up getting ugly um 500 Burrow let's just start with Mr. 500 Burrow that's what I said. I'm calling him that from now on straight up 500 Burrow um, because he passed for 525 and what four touchdowns on the Ravens and he hey Whatever you say, even if it's just a Ravens presser, oh, no, 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 no. It, it's going to make its way around. It's going to make its way around. And Wink's comments about Joe Burrow talking about how he's not, he don't got a gold jacket. Um, he ain't a Hall of Famer. His comments about, no, nah, we're not going to double, uh, we're not going to double Jamar Chase like we did Devontae Adams. Uh, cause Devontae Adams, he's one of the top two wide receivers and he's not two. Oh, really? Huh? Oh, yeah. They took those comments personally. They took them personally. Uh, he acknowledged it. Joe Burrow, 500 Burrow, acknowledged it after the game. And boy, if y'all saw Jamar Chase's Instagram story, he let it be known that he acknowledged it as well. Now, I, I wish that the Ravens might have taken Eli's Apple's comments a little more seriously, but... You know, it's just, it was just one of those games. Well, not even just one of those games, just two of those games because the only time that the Ravens have been absolutely beat down, this happened twice this year against the same team. What's crazy in this game is that a lot of times, shout out to Joe Burrow because he absolutely monster, killed it. <laughs> he, is, he is that deal, man. He let it be known who he is. I know a lot of Bengals fans were like, hold up. How did Lamar Jackson make the Pro Bowl over Joe Burrow? Oh, Joey B about to show them something. And he certainly did. Um, <laughs> like this game alone was enough to throw him in the Pro Bowl. Uh, but anyway, it seemed a lot of times, I don't know if it was just me or what, but it seemed a lot of times as if Joe Burrow almost knew what was coming. It almost seemed like he knew what was on the way. And again, you remember, like, Joe Burrow's a student of the game. He talked about it back in that uh, the Jaguars game because their defensive coordinator is Ravens, former defensive line coach, I believe. Um, and there was a play. Was it against the Jaguars? I think it was against the Jaguars. But there was a play at toward the end of the game where he said he knew they were bringing it. He knew they were bringing pressure. And he said he changed it. He checked it because he, he knew that he knew that, that Jaguars defensive coordinator got that Ravens blood in him. So he changed the play. And their tight end was wide open. And speaking of wide open, oh, Jamar Chase. Oh, my goodness. Amazing. That guy, like his, when he has the ball in his hands, like he, he's fast, but he's fluid. He's very smooth. He's just such a smooth runner. Uh, T. Higgins. T. Higgins said, oh, I'm feeling like Moss today. He is just going up and getting it. Especially there was that play. Uh, I think it was right before halftime. I forgot when it was, but it was third and 16 or maybe a second and 19. It was either second or third and long, like extra long. Um, and Joe Burrow, he looked, snapped the ball, just waiting, waiting. He said, oh, two guys on T. Higgins? <laughs> Threw it. Moss both of them. And it was like, it wasn't even like um they they had a chance to make a play on the ball. Higgins had a chance to make a play on the ball. But Higgins completely removed their opportunity to make a play on the ball because he made such a, a great play. Um, so shout out to him getting what two touchdowns? And again, he let it be known because Jamar Chase said, oh, you, you, you don't want to double me, but it, it ain't all about me. He said, you got to worry about him. And he brought it over to Tyler Boyd. Then he was like, and you got to worry about him. And he brought the camera over to T. Higgins. He said, he said how much you went for today? 194. How much, how much, touch, how much touchdown did you had? Two. And that, that's the team keep it clean version. They, 
you know, they were excited, so they were saying some other stuff. But anyway, you could check it out for yourself. Um, but Joe Burrow, with the Bengals running up the score, a lot of people had a problem with it. A lot of people were like, oh, that's classless, that's tasteless. No, it's four quarters. You have four quarters. And in those four quarters, it is your objective, it's, it's your team's objective to score more points than the other team and stop the other team from scoring points. If you can't do that, that's on you, buddy. That's on you. So this game was on the Ravens. They couldn't do it. They couldn't stop them. So I had zero problem with the Bengals running it up. The only thing, and I said it during the stream, I'm like, ooh, I, I said when it was like fourth quarter, like eight, seven, eight minutes left, and they were up by, what, 20, I think? I said, you, you they might as well go ahead and sit Joe Burrow. Might as well go ahead and sit him. But they left him out there, and he took a couple of sacks. He took like two or three extra sacks. That was the only thing. That was my only sort of not even problem with it, but more so caution for them. Uh, but he's obviously fine. He was happy. Uh, <laughs> again, he let it be known, like, wink. Okay. Oh, you want to say that? And see, the thing about it, too, Oh, man. I remember when Wink initially said it. But the thing about it, too, is that with Wink saying those comments, uh, and we're not asking him, oh, oh, be be all timid and back down and be scared. We're not, No, nobody's saying that for Wink to do that. But just know the situation. He said those comments after Jimmy Smith was already out. He hadn't been back yet from COVID. He said those comments after uh, Chris Westry was already out. He hadn't been back from COVID yet. And those two still aren't back. Hopefully they come back by the Rams game. Cause, oof. But anyway, he said those comments knowing his secondary already got torched by these guys early in the season. But he said those comments going into the game where the secondary was absolutely depleted. They were down to not even their last. They, they, Ravens are past their last in the secondary. Tavon Young, you know his status. He'd be banged up a lot. He got hurt this game. Anthony Averett. He got hurt this game. He took the knee to the ribs. Uh, hopefully, he's okay. By the time y'all see this video, uh, probably later on uh, on Monday. I'm recording this on Sunday night. Uh, probably later on on Monday is when John Harbaugh will give his post-game presser like he always does after every game. He'll talk by himself, and he'll give us updates, hopefully, on uh, the injured guys and let us know their statuses. So, it's one of those things. We'll see. We'll wait and see. Um... But I'm almost like, uh, for Tavon Young, it looked like it was a shoulder sting. It looked like it was some type of shoulder injury. Um, maybe it got dislocated or something. For Anthony Avery, it's obviously a ribs injury. So we just got to see, man. Just got to wait and see. Uh, but, yeah, Ravens defense, like, it's it's like going into the game, that our expect my expectations were low for Ravens defense. But I didn't think it was going to be, like, that bad. Like, that bad. Like, and it was crazy because... Guys were just, they were just having a day, all day. And I, and even with, like, the team being down to to their last, just for, for that, 500, 500, like, again, he, but he did something simple. He threw for over 400 when we played them the first time. He threw for, yeah, a lot of it was yak, but he still threw for it. It still goes on his stat sheet. So it's like, so when, when you see that, when you're like, all right, he threw for 525 yards on us, 500 borough, threw for 525 yards on the Ravens today. Oh, okay. Well, all of our starters were out. We, we were super banged up and, and COVID hit us too. That, that's why he did that. But then go back to the last game. We had a Marlon Humphrey. We had an Anthony Averitt. We had a Tavon Young. Jimmy Smith, I don't remember. But we had we had a Deshaun Elliott, we had Brandon Stevens, we had so many more guys, and he still threw for three hundred in that. I mean, for four hundred in that game. So, only thing consistent is the scheme. Just something to think about, though. But anyway, um, we with pressure with Joe Burrow. Pressure was like going in and out. Good tackling. Was going in and out. There were some times where the Ravens were tackling good. Sometimes they were where they weren't tackling good. Then they started to get into this pattern where Bengals would run the ball on first down. Ravens would stop them. All right, let's go. Yeah, second down now. Let's just make another stop. Two more stops. Then Bengals would throw the ball on second down, and somebody would just make a play. A Bengals player, not a Ravens player. And, and with that, a, a lot of times, it was so sad to watch, but a lot of times you saw 
Bengals players, the receivers, whether it's Higgins, Chase, whoever, they will make a catch short of the sticks. It'd be short. And they would literally drag the Ravens cornerbacks past the first down marker. They would, be, they would make the catch short of the sticks. Ravens cornerback, all right, I got him. And they would drag them past the first down marker. And it was like, wow. And their punter, Huber, Uber, whatever his name is, my apologies, but he didn't have to punt the ball not one time. He even, you, you Ravens got the punter tweeting stuff. The punter. Let, let, you know what? Let me try to pull it up real quick, man. Because when, if, if an opposing team's punter gets on Twitter and is tweeting stuff, like he tweeted this gift, basically showing that he was bored. It's like, if, if he's tweeting that, it's like, come on now. That's like, that, that's pretty embarrassing. I'm, I'm trying to pull this thing up, man. Uh, nope, that's not him. Ah, see, I don't even know his Twitter, man. I don't even know his Twitter. But he even got online. I, I know I can find it. But he, if, if you got him getting online, tweeting stuff, yeah, that's pretty bad. That, that, that's, that's pretty bad. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. Uh, they, oh, there it goes. There it goes. See, let me let me let me try to try to show you all this. I should have just downloaded it, but anyway, that's what he tweeted, and that's just a guy. I don't know if that's Mr. Bean or not, but that's just a guy just sitting there being bored, being bored because he ain't got nothing to do. You know, y'all you, remember those days with Sam Cooke? Remember those? It seemed like it was so long ago. The days where Sam Cooke would just be there and just be like, oh. <sighs> Oh, okay, we point after touchdown. Okay, I'll go out and hold for Justin Tucker. Yes. Well, he'd just be sitting there. Wouldn't be being used very often. Oh, yeah, that seems like so long ago because it was. But Ravens just did not stop the Bengals at all. At all. At all. Not once. Not even at the very end of the game. Didn't stop them at all. Joe Burrow, and he said with the whole gold jacket comment, he was like, I'm only in my second year. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. He don't know what's going to happen. So I just felt like it was unnecessary for him to say that. He went out there and hung 525 on his team. Yeah, they were depleted. Yeah, they covid it up. But he went and hung 525. 525 Burrow. 500 Burrow. Anyway, um, special teams. Uh, Devin DuVernay was out. Uh, Prochet was a return man. And he was a receiver today. Prochet let it be known. Hey, I'm a receiver today. And I think this was his most, the most action that he ever got in a game, ever. Um, but back to special teams. Didn't expect anything from Proche as a kick returner. Um, punts. <laughs> Didn't get any opportunity to see the punts. Because they ain't make the, the Bengals punt. Um, and yeah, kickoff special teams. What they scored? Uh, 20 points? Yeah, they scored 20 points, I think. How much did Ravens score? 20 or 21? Uh, Maybe it was 21. I, I, I've been forgetting the score. Okay, it was 21. I was forgetting the score all day today. I kept forgetting the score. Um, but anyway, they, uh, oof, big yikes, what a game. Uh, so, offense. Josh Johnson, we all know the situation. Lamar's been out, been hurt, didn't travel with the team. They probably don't want him to catch COVID. Um, Tyler Huntley got put on the COVID list. Chris Trevler, the practice squad quarterback, he got put on the COVID list. So it was Josh Johnson, and they signed Kenji Bahar literally yesterday. Again, I'm recording this on Sunday. So they, they signed him, the, signed Kenji Bahar the day before the game. Day before the game. Kenji, you're up on the active roster. Let's go. Well, he got called up, a COVID call up. But anyway, um, I felt like Josh Johnson, especially for the situation that he was in, Literally practiced with the ones on Friday since Tyler Huntley missed practice on Friday, Friday with an illness. Um, I felt like he played great. I felt like he played great. Um, one thing that I didn't like was the design runs for him. I hated those, uh, but I usually hate them for Tyler Huntley. I usually hate them for Lamar, too. Uh, so nothing changed. But the, the, one of the biggest differences with him is he doesn't have that Lamar, healthy Lamar speed, and he doesn't have that Tyler Huntley speed either. So when, when they would have him on these design runs, it would just, it would look so bad. And I just, I, I, I hated it with a passion. Um, felt like they were just waste of place. Uh, but again, for the situation that he was in, 
I felt like he did a great job. Uh, he, similar to Tyler Huntley, snap, look, decide, throw. Snap, look, decide, throw. Snap, look, decide, throw. He was making quick decisions and good quick decisions too. There were only, um, I think, like two plays. One of them ended up being an interception by Von Bell. But there was Von Bell was playing in the middle of the field a lot. And um, he, he almost got Tyler Huntley earlier. But Tyler Huntley tried to throw it to, I forgot who he tried to throw it to, but Von Bell sort of, he tipped it. Uh, but then later on, at the, toward the end of the game, he ended up getting that pick. Uh, but besides that, I thought Josh Johnson did a, did a good job. He did a good job, especially for being thrown into that situation, like literally out of nowhere. Um, you, you didn't expect to be playing, um, but you, there you are. Boom. So shout out to him. Um, I, I really appreciated how he came in, got Rashad Bateman his first touchdown. It's crazy with Rashad Bateman early on in the game. It's like he's in super involved. He, he got his first touch. He got these catches. He got his first touchdown in this. Like, okay, Bate, let's get it, baby. Never heard from him again. Never heard from him again. And it was like, oh, okay, what happened? And I don't know if the defense took him away from the game. They took him out the game. They like were really like, all right, we ain't letting Bateman beat us. It's going to have to be somebody else. I don't know if that was the case. I don't know if Ravens just didn't get him involved. I don't know. I don't know what happened. But, again, Proche had probably his biggest game as a, as a pro so far. Uh, Tylen Wallace, he got involved. He made some nice catches, especially one on a third and long where he caught it and he was like sort of stumbling, stumbling, and it looked like he was going to fall short of the first down, but he stayed up and he got the first. It was such a great play. Loved it. And love seeing him get a chance. Um, I love how Josh Johnson, he gave Miles Boykin two opportunities. It's kind of sad that I can count them out, um, but he gave him two opportunities. Uh, and it just, it didn't end up working out. Um, and I think on both, both plays, Josh Johnson, like, got the pass rush came through. So he got pressured a bit. Um, but I, I really appreciated him giving Miles Boykin those chances. Uh, who else? Hollywood. Hollywood was involved. Uh, he had a couple of catches. Um, and the wide receivers, they, they all, they, they all had a couple of catches each. It was nice to see. But. Mr. Money Mark Mandrews. He has had a phenomenal season. He's at like, I think, 1,100 yards. Still got two games to go. It's like with Mark Andrews, you know he's going to get the ball. You know he is, but he still makes plays. They still find ways to get him the ball. He still makes plays. And he... Uh, yeah, he is, he's had his drops. He even had a drop this game. I think he might have had two, but I know he had one for sure. Um, but he certainly makes up for it in a major way. Mark Andrews is a certified playmaker. We were having a discussion uh, during the live stream of the game. Like, if Mark Andrews is the best Ravens tight end ever. And then we had to sort of change it because the, the Shannon Sharp played there before too. Uh, but we had to change it to, is he the best drafted Ravens tight end ever? And I would think so. Um, I think Pitta and Todd Heap's hands are better or were better. But Mark Andrews, the playmaking ability, he just has more playmaking ability than those guys. Because he's like, he's faster than those guys. And it's a different NFL than it was when Dennis Pitta played. It's much different from when Todd Heap played. Uh, but he's, that, he's like a, a big, big, thick receiver. Cause he he got he can move. Mark Andrews can move, um, and he again he just makes a lot of plays, man. So shout out to Mark Andrews. Hayden Hurst, man, that it's crazy how things can change, right? Hayden Hurst was supposed to be that dude. He was supposed to be, but injury happened, and Mark Andrews stepped in, stepped up, and now Mark Andrews is on his second contract, while Hayden Hurst he's holding on to his first. So you just never know how things are going to go uh, in the NFL. Um, with the off at the run game this week, no, nah, it wasn't really much of anything. And Bengals were like, no, y'all not going to run on us. I don't even remember exactly what the numbers were, but just from watching the game, Bengals were like, no, nah, y'all not going to run on us. There were some times when I just felt like the, the flow, the flow of the game sort of uh, – 
it sort of escaped Giro a bit because the Ravens had been having success airing the ball out. They had success throwing the ball, um, but then it seemed like Giro was trying to sort of force the run a bit. I don't know. You can't just do everything the same every single draft. I get that. But I, the run just, it wasn't it today. Um, but it is what it is. Again, the, the, with the situation with the Ravens today, expectations were low. Um, we didn't expect the Ravens to go in there and be, oh, yeah, I thought it was going to be closer than that, much closer than that, but uh, expectations were still low. But the Ravens are in the playoffs right now, as of right now, when I'm recording this. When you see this, uh, which should be on Monday, uh, but it, we'll see, uh, but Dolphins play the Saints. If the Saints win, Ravens remain in that seventh seed. And if they, if they win out, and they, I believe they need a little bit of help too, uh, but if they win out then and get whatever help they need, then they obviously in. But that's a tough task to ask to beat the Rams and the Steelers. One advantage that you do have is that you are at the crib. Now, which refs you get, <laughs> who knows? Who knows what, how that's going to be for whatever refs they get for these next two games. Um, but they are at the crib, so that should hopefully help some. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, this, it's just, they just got steamrolled. Got steamrolled. And the, the Bengals let it know that this, this was personal for them. This was personal. So we'll see how the season shakes out. Man, um, right now we only have two more scheduled post-game thoughts videos because we got two more games left in the regular season. But hopefully we can do at least uh, six, six or seven more because that would mean the Ravens went to the Super Bowl and we could talk about a post-game thoughts from the Ravens. But anyway, uh, we'll, we'll see how the season goes. I love y'all too. I know it's going to be somebody watching this part and be like, what? Ravens ain't making no Super Bowl, buddy. They ain't making no Super Bowl, but it's, it's, it's all good, man. We'll see how the season goes. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. And, wow, we are out.